On today's World Insight, day one of the national security law for HK SAR. The details and the significance of Hong Kong legal well, I think the law is pretty clear. And the future of Hong Kong and the sign national security law, why they go hand in hand. The reason from a diverse set of prominent Hong Kong figures. It would not allow foreign power or bodies to interfere with Hong Kong's internal affairs. Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. China's top legislative body on Tuesday unanimously passed the national security law for Hong Kong. President Xi Jinping signed a presidential order to promulgate the law, which takes effect immediately. The 163 members of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress began the second deliberation of the bill during its 20th session in Beijing from Sunday to Tuesday and adopted the law of the People's Republic of China on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. The meeting, which closed on Tuesday afternoon, also adopted a decision to add the law to Annex 3 of the Hong Kong SAR Basic Law. So what are the key details of the law? What does it mean to the one country, two systems? Let's hear from our panelists. <laughs> On the significance of the National Security Law of Hong Kong Special Administrative Region in Hong Kong, we are joined by Professor Whitman Hong, who is the Hong Kong Deputy to the 13th National People's Congress and also Principal Liaison Officer for the Hong Kong, Shenzhen and Tianhai Authority. Also in Hong Kong, we have Lawrence Ma, a barrister and also Chairman of the Hong Kong Legal Exchange Foundation. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, Mr. Ma, now we understand uh, yes. that the law the details of it would not be known to the public until today. Now, before coming into the yes. studio, I was uh, rushing to read through some of the most important clauses in it. Uh, but how would uh, the common people in Hong Kong know what is legal and what is not legal starting from today? Well, I think the law is pretty clear, and the uh, uh, phrases and, 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 voc and, and clauses, as well as the sentences and the wordings there in Chinese are pretty easy to read. So there should not be any equivoc equivocation or doubts, um, at least on the four major aspects of the law. I understand the law enforcement, mainly the police officers today in Hong Kong, they mainly have a purple flag in their hand on which written some of the specific areas that they want the public to know regarding this law and whoever they consider might be breaking the law they would show that flag to them and if the other party would not change the behavior or the actions or the rhetorics they might be arrested is that how it works mr ma <laughs> yes, well, that, that's the law uh, working in an operation ground level. The law is also about um, ap apprehending, arresting, charging, prosecuting, and, and putting that person to trial and I subsequently sentencing that person and eventually imprison him or her in jail. Mm -hmm. So um, the hand holding up a flat would be a first step in the enforcement of the law so that the, the potential offender or the suspect would have a knowledge that he has or committing um, an offense under the national security law. Mm. Mr. Ma, many have been wondering whether uh, the people in Hong Kong will be used to this law. Uh, after all, it is a very difficult, different political system and circumstances before the law eventually being passed on June the 30th uh, in Hong Kong. So, Mr. Ma, do you, are you confident that people will be able to go to understand what is the real content of it and also be able to uh, implement it, uh, particularly by the majority of people in Hong Kong, Mr. Ma? Well, I think, I think the great majority of Hong Kong residents are not terrorists. They are not um, uh, uh, subversionists. 
uh, or successions, uh, people who engage in successive or succession conduct, nor they would collaborate or collaborating with foreign powers in order to overthrow our government. Not, not, not citizens of Hong Kong are not that type of people, but they are lured or, in, or, or, or they're lured or attracted into or funded or trained to go into activities which now they are uh, pretty accustomed to mm. in, in, in activities to, that, that destabilize the Hong Kong government and administration. So they, they have to revert that activity. They have to stop that activity mm. altogether. But of course, they, we, have still, we do still have freedom of expression in Hong Kong, so they can freely criticize the government, you know, to put them on the right track. Oh, provided that that criticism is conducted and carried out by lawful means. Mm -hmm. If they do it by unlawful means in provoking hatred against the government and which resulted in serious legal uh, consequences, that would be definitely an imprisonment sentence imposed hefty on them. Mm. Professor Han, uh, what do you make of the possibility of the police force uh, being able to enforce it on the first day the law is being made public? And how will they be further, uh, you know, uh, getting informed or being informed about the law so that the right actions could be taken? Professor Han. Well, like any jurisdiction, when there's a new law, there is a period of time people, uh, both sides, okay, the general public and also the law enforcement agency, will take time to learn. And they learn it by, you know, taking actions, they learn it by going through cases. Uh, you cannot expect, like, that everybody in Hong Kong will understand every single bit of the law. But just like uh, uh, Lawrence just said, um, you know, most people in Hong Kong has nothing to do with these kind of activities anyway. Uh, if in the uh, area of uh, enforcing the law, I already have seen um, there's a new flag, you know, uh, there's a new purple flag today uh, shown by the police to the demonstrators, basically telling them that uh, their displaying of any uh, kind of uh, slogan for independence of Hong Kong could be, uh, you know, uh, infringing the uh, new national security law mm. and uh, subjected to uh, sentencing. So. That is, I think, is a good start. Uh, of course, it takes, uh, you know, in, in, we are in a, in, a, in a common law jurisdiction. It takes a few cases, a trial cases. I mean, I can see the opposition side is already trying to put something to test, but that's fine. I think we should, you know, we should, um, uh, uh, you know, arrest some people, put them, you know, you know, if and then decide that whether they should be prosecuted. And then in the prosecution, we let the court decide whether these people were really breaking the law or were they, you know, not. And and by having those uh, precedent cases in the future, then everybody uh, on both sides mm. uh, understand fully about the law. Right. If you look at some of the specific clauses, uh, I do have some on hand. For example, it established new offenses of secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign powers. There's also a new law enforcement presence from the central government in Hong Kong, which is called the Office for Safeguarding National Security. Meanwhile, there's a National Security Committee going to be established, uh, and the members are made of both of Hong Kong government officials in the SAR and special advisor, quote unquote, coming from the central government. There's also specific clauses about the security commitment as well as. Uh, the public transport and public services protection. Things related to that, uh, of course, uh, terrorism being mentioned as well, perceived uh, foreign interference in Hong Kong also being mentioned in certain clauses. Um, this is a very wide range of areas to cover. Now, what do you consider will be the most important areas from now on, particularly at the very beginning of implementing this law? Mr. Ma. Well, that's a big question. I know it is. Um, I think the the. <laughs> I think on the ground level, as we, we've just seen, we have people who are still holding up uh, Hong Kong independence flags, quote unquote, and and that um, activity would have to be stopped. That's one aspect, and we have also another aspect in, on an international level where these sort of rioters and separatists are funded 
Um, so um, the, at that level, anyone who, who sort of collaborates with that um, foreign power, meaning some of, our, some of the known political figures in the opposition, mm -hmm. would be the target. And many of them have now, of course, kept quiet. But whether they're second in charge would continue behind the scene, continue to carry out these directives to, to fund these ground level protesters. Now, that would be something that requires investigation. So you yeah. will see the law operating in various aspects, not just the lowest, but it goes to the middle, mid, middle level and at the highest level. It's all operative in all aspects and in all facets of, 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 of lives with respect to those offenders who would be suspect, suspected to have committed any type of the laws in our na new national security law. Right. One of the things, uh, if you look at the international press, that uh, people are paying much attention to some of the so-called leaders of the pandem groups. And we saw some of them, Professor Huang, have uh, withdrawn uh, or left, uh, quote unquote, uh, the original political movement or party as they seize it over the past few days. So what's going to happen to these people? And how is this law likely to have an impact on how they are likely to be dealt with uh, by the police authority and also by this uh, uh, national security office being established right now? Um, I think, first of all, uh, I, I can understand why they do that, uh, because uh, when there's a new law, uh, it would not rule for the uh, actions taken before the law was official. So if they say today or yesterday, and they were yesterday, yesterday saying, oh, okay, we have nothing to do with the independence Hong Kong, uh, we support the basic law, they kind of like, you know, uh, uh, freaked out from the original group of people that the, the rioters and all those people who may be subsequently, uh, you know, subject to the punishment of the new law. Mm. So these, these leaders, they're very smart. They just try to distance themselves. And, and quite rightly so, uh, a new law by itself cannot punish people who has been committing uh, these crimes before the law was official. However, as you can read from the law itself and also uh, from our common knowledge, there are other laws and regulations in Hong Kong that governed various activities in, in the past. Mm -hmm. And these laws also have some measures against, um, you know, people, uh, things related to national security, related to uh, 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 government secrets and things like that. And those uh, laws should be enforced. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, um, these people, these leaders who are now claiming, them, claiming themselves, uh, uh, you know, away from the movement, um, may still be punished by other laws, but not by the new national security law. Mm. If they are breaking the law, of course, that is the condition, and also the investigation. Yeah, if, they had, if they had bro broken the law in the past, uh, if they had broken some of the other laws of Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. Beautifully said, uh, and very clearly said. Uh, Another question a lot of people have been asking about Hong Kong is, will Hong Kong be the same? anymore after this new law comes into being. Now, we've seen Hong Kong coming back to the motherland 23 years. Over the past 23 years, there are different circumstances. From now on, it's not necessarily going to get less complicated if you look at the geopolitics, big power relations, and also some of the things that have an impact on why Hong Kong was like it was over the past few years. Uh, that which also contributed to the reason why this law came into being. So anyway, so things are not less is necessarily going to c become less complicated. So will this law be able to help us to anchor the stability? Well, I think international or international politics or geopolitics, it's always about foreign influences. One country tries to influence another, try to get an advantage out from the other's election, maybe to bring the regime down, the regime is not complacent, the regime is not submissive enough to the foreign interests or the foreign power, so the foreign power topples it by way of um, color revolution, which is peaceful, or by invasion, which is, uh, which is more violent. 
So we, we have international politics all, all since whenever there are countries in this, in, in this world. So this Hong Kong new national security law would have definitely has an effect of curtailing, stopping, or minimizing, or otherwise putting an end to this endless foreign interference. Professor Hong, your reaction? Yes. Uh, well, I think, first of all, Hong Kong will never be the same. I mean, ever since what happened last year and also what happened in the past few years, Hong Kong will never be the same. Um, but I think the purpose is not to go back to where we were, but go to a Hong Kong that we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, with this new law, first, just like what uh, uh, Lawrence has said, um, you know, uh, hopefully, first of all, we will stop the foreign intervention. We will stop the collusion with this. Uh, you know, we, we, we have seen um, so, may, so much money floating into the movement. I mean, I was just reading the news. There was an arrest of a uh, final year student of uh, Chinese University, and she had been helping money laundering of 300 something million dollars for university students. So these kind of things can be stopped by the new law. Uh, hopefully it can. I mean, uh, I, I think it needs, still needs to be put into execution. Uh, we see the law, we, we like it, we, we think it has been thoroughly thought through and try to cover everything, but then again, it all depends on the actual execution. Yes. And also it depends on our good prosecution and court system mm. so that this law can be enforced um, you know, to, in the right way. Um, I think uh, we will never become the Hong Kong we used to know uh, 20 years ago, but hopefully it will be, you know, first of all, more stable. Secondly, um, people focus more on economic uh, instead of political. And thirdly, our government will try to solve some of the deep-rooted problems uh, we had uh, accumulated ever since, I think, 30 years ago. And these kind of things, we, we still need to sort it out ourselves in Hong Kong. I mean, um, but so in short, to, uh, to your question, um, the law will safeguard the security, well, national security of Hong Kong and also um, put a warning out there so that uh, when foreign government or when some of the local, um, I call them writers uh, or terrorists or, or these people, they think twice before they, um, you know, uh, take the action that they were taking uh, mm. uh, since last June. Okay, Professor hopefully Whit that will happen. Yeah. No. Professor Whitman Hong, Lawrence Ma, thank you so much for joining us. All the best.